Hello everyone, welcome to part four of this tutorial. We're going to be drawing this ear, so it should be quite a short part actually. Um, there isn't as much detail to focus on in comparison to this ear, and it is a little bit smaller due to the angle of George's head as well. So hopefully it will be under an hour this one, but we'll see how we get on. Um, if this is the first video you're seeing out of this series, uh, do check out the earlier videos if you would like to follow this drawing from start to finish. I will put links to the previous videos in the description below so that you can have a look. And if you would like to download the reference photo and follow along, I have put the link to it in both the description on the first part and also in a comment because the links seem to be going a little bit funny in my descriptions at the moment. I'm trying to figure out how to fix it but I have put it in the description, no not description, I've put it in the comment as well on the first video um, if the one in the description isn't working. But anyway, enough waffling from me. Um, same as the previous videos, I'm going to be using Faber-Castell Polychromos um, and the paper I am using is Fabriano Artistico Hot Pressed Watercolour Paper. Um, so as I always mention, if you have the same pencils as me, great, you can follow along with the same colours. If you do have a different brand, don't worry, just try and match the colours as closely as you can and they will do the trick. So I'm just erasing the outline best I can as I have done for previous steps. I'm just making it as faint as possible so that there's no graphite outline showing through the coloured pencil once I'm done. There we go. Um, I have actually used the embossing tool on this bit here for some of these whiskers. So hopefully as I complete the ear, those whiskers will show up a little bit. You can see them a little bit down here and you can see the ones over here as well, but hopefully they'll show up a little bit more in front of the ear itself. So we're going to start off with the lightest colours. Um, I'm going to start with warm grey one to carefully shade in any areas. I'm going to start with the edge of the ear here. Um, like with the other ear, we've got the white tufty bits of fur inside. So I'm going to try and leave those bits empty for the time being. And I'll try and shade in the areas surrounding it, um, which should hopefully leave the approximate shape of the fur that's in there. So just using small circular motions, keeping the pressure very light. So it's always good to build up the layers very gradually. You probably notice I haven't got a particularly sharp pencil at the moment. Um, I'm not really too concerned about it being super sharp in a stage like this because we're not really adding any detail. We're just simply colouring in. So having a slightly blunter pencil isn't really going to be an issue. I'm just going to try and rub out these shapes a little bit more. Of course, you want to be able to see the outline a little bit. There we go. So you can see I have very much left it white around the middle sections. Just going to add a little bit more on this side and kind of fade it into the white. So decrease the pressure as I move towards it because it isn't really like a solid line between colour and white fur. It kind of fades into it. And then I'm going to try and draw the shadows between the hairs. So it's almost like drawing the hairs in reverse and that is the best way to draw light fur over the top of a dark background is rather than drawing the fur itself or the hairs themselves, you're drawing the spaces in between the hairs. 
which should leave the illusion of hairs behind. And it's very much just a rough guide at the moment, just getting the shapes laid out. So there is quite a pink tint to the overall ear, um, just because there is quite a lot of skin showing through, especially around here. And even on the parts where you've got ginger fur, there are some pink undertones. So I'm gonna be going in with beige red, which is one of my favorite pinky colors to use for base layers, as it is nice and light. And it's just perfect to get that subtle tone. So again, I'm just going on top of any areas that I've just done with the gray. Small circular motions, nice light pressure. You don't wanna to press too hard, otherwise the colors won't settle on top of each other very nicely. And just take your time. I find this part very relaxing actually because you're not really having to focus on too much detail at this stage. But just um, keep an eye out for anywhere that might not really want any pink. For example, down here, there's a little white, whitey grey patch there. So I'm going to avoid putting pink pencil on that part just because it doesn't really need it. So I've done the kind of basic bits around the edges. So again, I'm just trying to fill in any gaps between the white hairs. And as we add more layers there, the white hairs will become more and more obvious as we go. Um, I think this ear, there's more contrast between the hairs than on the other one. So we'll make sure we try and achieve that effect. But I'm just gonna build it up nice and gradually. So now that I've applied those two lightest colours, I want to kind of blend those together, make sure it's a nice, decent layer, um, just so that if I use the slice tool later on, like I did in the previous video, I want to have a decent light base layer to, to expose if I do scratch away any darker surfaces. So I'm just gonna use my white pencil um, and gently go over everything, a little bit more pressure, but not too much because I don't want to completely get rid of the tooth of the paper. But that should be enough just to make it a nice, decent layer. Now you may notice this isn't a polychromos pencil, this is Caran d'Ache Luminance, but any white pencil will do the trick. I just personally prefer this one because it's softer, so it's very good for blending. But the polychromos white pencil will certainly do the trick it'll be absolutely fine or if you've got a different brand of pencils your white pencil that you have will be fine as well the challenge with um, using the white pencil of course is not really being able to know what bits you've covered because it's quite hard to see so just do your best to make sure everything is covered and just take your time And I'm making sure I'm covering um, the bit that's just white as well, just so that it's all nice and consistent. I have to say, this is uh, this step is one of those things where I'm not sure if this is something that anyone else does. Um, I don't know if this is actually technically a correct thing to do, but it always works for me. So 
in that sense, I don't think it is a wrong thing to do as long as it works. That's the main thing. So if something works for me, I'm going to share it. is all covered so we can move on to our next color i think we'll get this little bit of fur done uh, so that is going to be quite ginger so just need to find the next color annoyingly i've put away all my pencils since doing the last section so i just need to make sure i find the same color that i've used previously I believe it's Bistra that I need, the one that I can never say. There it is. That's the one, so just a nice subtle brown. So I'm going to try and start um, doing my pencil strokes kind of in the direction of the fair. So not so much in a circular motion now. I'm also doing it very lightly because I'm mainly using this brownie colour to mark out where the fur is going. So usually I probably would have gone in with a slightly lighter colour first. But again, as I've mentioned in previous videos, you may find that when you do different drawings, you don't do things in the exact same order every time. just using it to mark out any slightly darker bits. There is a little darker patch here at the bottom of the ear. using it just to mark out any slightly darker bits on this side as well. Again, just very, very gently. It seems that the very edge of the ear is quite pale again, but there is that slightly darker border um, just in from the outside. now just adding some colour to where the fur kind of meets the ear and just to keep it looking nice and fluffy I'm actually drawing individual hairs now just to get the effect of the fur because it does want to look nice and soft here And just pay attention to the direction of it in different locations like in this corner it will start to kind of go this way into where the white tufty hairs are so i'm just kind of working it into that direction So 
sign. I'm now going to use cinnamon, so my slightly darker pink, uh, just to go over anything that might want a bit more of a pink tint to it, especially this fur on this side. So I definitely need it kind of halfway up. Similar to this side, if you notice the fur kind of halfway up has a slightly richer section, it is very similar on this side. So I'm just paying attention to that. Um, this pink colour is very much kind of a background colour, so I'm just kind of going back into colouring in gently with it, small circular motions. I'll go back in with the texture with um, one of the more orangey colours shortly. It's just not really needed too much at the moment. Just purely using it to alter the tint of the colour. And we definitely do need a bit more pink colour um, on the skin around this area of the ear. So just very gently building it up around there. But do take note of the shape of the tufty hairs in the middle. We don't want to be getting rid of that. So I am going to be drawing the spaces in between the hairs again with this slightly darker pink. And I'm actually going to add a little bit of those um, parts in between the hairs on this side as well. I have noticed that this section up here does want a little bit more of a yellow tint to it because it is ginger fur. So I'm going to go in with my ivory pencil and do a little bit more blending. And then after that, we'll add some more slightly orangey colours over the top. But this blending will A, kind of help soften it a little bit and B, help apply that yellowy colour that we want. And again, I'm being a little bit more um, hard with the pressure than I was previously, but I'm not pressing too hard, just so that I don't wear out the paper. looking a little bit softer now so now time to use burnt ochre which is the orangey colour I'm using but just a reminder it isn't like a pure orange if that makes sense you don't really if you're looking for a similar colour if you have a different set it is quite a brownie orange this is like a proper orange here 
so you can see it is quite a lot more dull than a bright orange because if you go for the bright orange it's going to look a little bit more cartoony <laughs> so yeah it wants to be slightly orange but not too bright orange um but yeah this should give the overall effects that i want i'm just going to sharpen it actually just so i can get that texture and fur details in ignore the noise <laughs> So I'm going to be doing little individual pencil strokes to produce each of the hairs just to get that texture in. I'm kind of starting off at the base of the ear and then I'll work up each side. And if you feel that you need a little bit more of the orangey pigment, then increase the pressure and then you'll get more on there. But if you just want a little hint of orange, then just do nice little feathery strokes nice and gently and pay attention to the direction of the fur make sure you're following that to make it realistic and keep each pencil stroke consistent to how long the hairs are so again i'm directing the direction of the fur towards the center of the ear here And the ginger fur does fade out into the middle gradually so i'm just going to apply a little bit of this color towards the middle but just very gently and where we've got a richer color halfway up the ear i'm applying more pressure it's still definitely a hint of orange as we go to the top but not quite so much so i'm reducing the pressure of the pencil and also doing the pencil strokes a little bit further apart so it's not so dense and a bit like on this ear there are going to be little hairs coming off the top so i'm just going to sharpen my pencil again i'm going to get those in now And being very gentle and just kind of flicking the pencil but making sure it stays relatively under control um, the flicking motion does just help get the nature of how the hairs are if you feel that you're not sure if you're going to be able to keep the pencil under control and you're not really sure um, how it's going to go do feel free to get another bit of paper and have a little practice um, just so you can see how your hand gets on with this motion then at least your first go isn't going to be on this drawing um, and if it goes a little bit wrong it doesn't matter there we go so that's all we need there at the top i'm just going to add a little bit of texture on the way around the edge as well because there is definitely a bit of a fluffy look the whole way around just very subtly though so again just doing each individual hair keeping my pencil strokes very short so that they are consistent with how long the hairs actually are. There we go. 
And along this slightly darker bit I did with the brown earlier, I think that wants to look a little bit more orange. So I'm going to do little strokes of fur along there as well. I think this overall area does need a little bit more pink, so I will be adding that very shortly. back in with the cinnamon because I think a darker pink will be useful at this stage. I'm just going to work a little bit more on the gaps between the hairs. There are bigger gaps between the hairs towards the bottom here and we will eventually be darkening these gaps with a grey pencil. So we will get that in due course. I'm going to add some of this pink over the top of where I've just done the orangey colour as well. Notice the top needs a little bit more colour as well, so I'm just going to build up the parts in between the hairs again up here. Again, you probably notice they will need to look a bit more grey than they are at the moment, but using this pink pencil is a good start. Okay, I think it's time to go in with a bit of grey now. So I'm just going to find the right shade of grey. I think we'll make use of warm grey 3 because it's not too dark. So we can always build it up to be a bit darker if needed. So I'm just going to sharpen it actually. starting off with the top part so it's quite a lot of grey at the top but keeping it quite gentle and just mainly going over where I've already applied the pink between the white hairs. And I'm kind of starting the pressure off quite well a little bit harder to the edge here and as I move inwards decreasing it slightly and kind of flicking the pencil away just to give it a bit more of a natural look <sighs> and yeah don't forget to get rid of any bits of pencil dust and residue either just by blowing it off the paper or use a soft brush just to keep your paper nice and clean and tidy so I want to get a bit more of a curve going kind of in that direction on these hairs so I'm going to try and do the gaps in between more to that curve just to show that with the white hairs again starting off with a little bit more pressure on the edge and decreasing it as I go towards the middle and mainly focusing on where we've already done it with the pink 
but as it's a darker colour it's a good opportunity to add like further detail if needed. In some ways it does look a little bit too like the hairs look a little bit too lined up but that's where the slice tool will come in handy a bit later i can make the hairs very direction a little bit but of course if you don't have a slice tool or an exacto knife available then it will be a little bit harder to get that effect but just do your best to make use of these shadows in between to get the hairs the shape that you want them And around this section, there's also some quite deep shadows between the hairs as well. So I'm going to start adding those. Similar sort of technique, but I'm starting at this side and flicking the pencil towards the middle. So I feel like some of it needs a slightly more grey tint but I don't want to go in too dark so I'm going to go back to the warm grey one that I used at the very beginning for the base layer. I'm just going to sharpen it up. And I'm going to continue the same motions but use a little bit more pressure. Oh, just snapped it there. <laughs> Be careful. And that will kind of soften the shapes I've already done with the darker greys. And just kind of bring it all together a little bit. And I'll do the same on the other side. So I'm almost using it to blend the shadows that I've done. But kind of rather than just colouring in over it. I'm following the same motion but with a little bit more pressure. bad it's almost looking a little bit blotchy in some places so I will reapply a little bit more contrast I'm actually going to go in with warm grey five now just very very gently on the darkest parts and that will just kind of lift forward uh, the white hairs but yes yeah, super super gently and just like a little bit more pressure on the darkest parts but still keep it very gentle you're better off being gentle and adding more if you need it especially from like the roots here it wants to be a little bit darker And 
going to add some from the right hand side as well so again kind of going in reverse filling in the in the parts in between So I now want to add a bit more richness to the ginger fur that I've done so far. So I'm going to be using Burnt Sienna, which is the nice ready brown, which will just help to deepen the red shades a little bit. Just going to sharpen this. So I'm going to start at the base of the ear here. We do want it to be a little bit darker on this bit and I'm doing the individual pencil strokes to create each individual hair again. Nice and short and nice and delicate as well. And I won't be using this all over, it's just very much going to be on those slightly richer parts where we want a little bit more colour. a bit more um, burnt ochre so the orangey colour here just to bring the fur a little bit closer to where the ear is it's quite a subtle transition um, between fur and ear on some cats that won't be the case there will sometimes be more contrast between the fur on the face and the ear a little bit of grey to add detail to this little section here so very delicate pencil strokes creating some slightly grey fur here and following a slightly curved direction I'm going to add a bit more pressure here just so there's a bit more shadow And there wants to be a little bit more darkness and detail here so I'm just going to gently colour in some grey kind of follow the curve of the E around like this and I'm going to go back in with the paler pink so beige red just colour a little bit on top of it just to add a bit more of a delicate pink do that back up the side as well because I think it does want to look a little bit pinker than it is at the moment let's add a little bit to the top as well and I think we could do a little bit more pink around the roots here Let's 
so I'm going to do individual first strokes with this pink kind of going into towards the middle just to add a slightly more pink shade near the roots. little bit more grey down in this corner it does want to be a little bit darker down by the base again just doing the individual strokes of hair perfect and before we go in with the slice tool to add detail I just want to make it look a little bit more fluffy up the side here so with the burnt ochre I'm just going to do very small little fair strokes going out from the side just to make it look a little bit more fluffy just a hint of um, texture lovely so I'm now going to be using my slice tool to add a bit more um, texture to the white hairs and add a little bit more detail and shape and also it will help to add some more highlights as well so I'm going to kind of angle it like that and do the shapes in the same direction the fur is going so that's it and you can see how that's added a bit of a highlight there just make sure you blow away any residue and I also just use my finger to carefully because you don't want to cut yourself to just wipe off any pencil from there as well so it doesn't transfer to other areas. this is making such a difference so again if you don't have one of these I recommend it so much it really does help add so much to colour pencil drawings If I want to add it anywhere else, maybe a little bit more along here. sienna just add a little bit more red at the base of the ear just a few final touches soften um you know where i've done the embossing just where i've done slightly darker pencil it looks a little bit harsh um so i'm just going to try and sharpen my white pencil and draw along it to see if i can soften it a little bit
just trying to do the same a bit further down as well. I think that does make it look better actually. It makes it look a little bit more natural. Perfect. So I think we're done with that section. So as expected, it was a slightly shorter one. Just going to tidy up the paper surrounding it. Actually, just one more thing. I just want to blend this top a little bit. It's looking a little bit grainy, so I'm just going to use the ivory just to blend it out slightly. So just using increased pressure, but following the general direction. That looks a bit better. Maybe a little bit in here as well. Perfect, I think I'm happy with that. So yeah, that's the ears now fully complete. Next time we will actually move on to the next section. So the next section will be the nose and the mouth and like the ginger fur surrounding it. So he's got these two ginger splodges here um, and then his chin is ginger as well. And then after that, we'll move on to the white fur. Um, I hope that all made sense and I hope you all enjoyed. Any questions, as always, feel free to comment or drop me an Instagram message. Um, and if you are um, drawing along with me, I would absolutely love to see any progress you've made so far. Thank you so much for watching as always. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you again soon.